Welcome to week 2. Uh, since we are already done about the part 1 of the Republic Act 7920, we will discuss now the part 2 of the new electrical engineering law of 1995. Okay, uh, still the objectives. Uh, we need to familiarize the articles and sections of the law since you are already familiar with the, the definition of terms. Uh, compare the old law and new electrical engineering law. Now you will discuss the RA7920 and its importance in the electrical engineering profession. So after this lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, in our discussion boardroom which about the issues and concerns uh, for 2020. All about the RA7920 since we encounter problems in our chapter which is IIEE. Article, Article 3 of Republic Act 7920, which states about examination and legislation. This is the this is the part where how do you qualify to be a registered electrical engineer? And the section 10, examination required. So all applicants shall be required to pass a technical examination. The technical examination related to the board exam, which is regulated by PRC. How about the section 11? So section 11, a valid certificate of registration and a valid professional license from the commission are required. So this is from PRC. They are only duly uh, commissioned institution from the government, which are, they can certify you or they can give you a certificate of registration. Section 12. So about the examination fees, so the 90% uh, belong to the special fund and the 10% shall be set aside as a trust fund. Well, the section 13, which is the registration fees, license fees and fines, this is uh, actually you are renewing your license for every three years. So all ap applicants shall be subject to the payment of registration. So the 50% of it are to be treated as the special fund again. And the other 50% shall be set up in a separate special fund. Okay. From, until now, this is common discussions in some of the national conventions of IIE. Where do funds go? Where do funds proceed? 14 states about the exemption from examination registration if you are a foreign professional which is legally qualified the second is scope of work shall be limited only to the particular work so if you are assigned in the construction field then as a professional individual then you are only uh, qualified for the construction not allowed for any field shall secure a special permit from the government shall not engage in a private practice on their own. So this is just like the issue of ABS-CBN and no foreign individuals can own a private company or any a company here in the Philippines and shall be employed by the private firm which is usually uh, owned by a Filipino citizen. And lastly, you are exempted for only six months and another renewal for another six months. Uh, no registration with the board shall be required of the following. If you are engineering student, apprentice, or other persons employed or acting as subordinates. So you are, if you are engineering students, you are qualified for registered electrical engineer. If you are apprenticeship, belong to apprenticeship or persons employed, you are belong to registered master electrician. Persons in charge or supervising the operation, voltages not exceeding 250 volts and capacity not exceeding 50 kilovolt ampere. So no registration is allowed for this area. Okay, for section 15, for holding of examination, so examinations should be given twice a year in the city of Manila and the other places. So we have uh, September and April board exams. 
Section 16, it is a qualifications of applicant for registration as PEE. So, for if you're if you're dreaming to be a professional electrical engineer, you must be a citizen of the Philippines, of course. You are good reputation with high moral values, with no illegal activities or illegal records. Uh, yes, you are not being finally convicted by the court of an offense involving moral turpitude. Now, you must be a holder degree of Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, BSEE. Then, you have a four years or more of active practice, but this is still questionable since some of the PEEs are limiting uh, registered electrical engineers which has four years and applying for PEE. Yet, this is still some discussion in some national convention. Section 17, Qualifications of Applicants for Registered Electrical Engineer Examination. So, this is where you belong. Okay, of course, you must be a citizen at least 21 years of age with no any illegal activities or any records and must be a holder of degree of Bachelor of Science in Electrical which is Registered Master Electrician. So, still, be a citizen of the Philippines, you must be at least 18 years of age with no records and you must have technical backgrounds with it. Okay, for the technical backgrounds, for part 1, you must have at least 3 years or of a 5-year BSE program or a 3-year course in Electrical Engineering Technology which is offered in USEP with one year practice. This practice is validated by a professional electrical engineer. Second one is you must have two years electrician course with at least two years apprenticeship. So as you observe, it has four years total. Part three is you must have one year electrician course with the three years apprenticeship or practice. Then the fourth one, if you are only a high school graduate, then you must have at least five years of apprenticeship to apply the Registered Master Electrician license. Now the coverage. What will be the coverage of the exam? So for PE, uh, it only needs an oral examination or interview with the following documents to be submitted on the board. Number one is certified experience record for four years or more. Second one is the technical paper, which the technical paper must be related on where you are practicing your field. If you're in academe, you're in the construction, power, distribution, or any kinds of electrical field. Third one is the three certifications from the Board of Electrical Engineering the scope of examination for registered electrical engineer under section 19 so for registered electrical engineer you must pass a written examination on different subjects so the first one is the mathematics the 25% of it is the mathematics the 30% of your total grade is the engineering sciences and allied subjects and the heaviest one is the major subjects the electrical engineering professional subjects which weighs 45 percent of your total grade or score for board exam how about the scope of examination for registered master electrician so still you must pass a written examination with this topic the technical subjects so from uh, the standards and also with the PEC, Philippine Electrical Code Parts 1 and 2, where electrical codes are stated. So take note, the number of test questions shall be such that the examination can be finished in one 8-hour day. So 8 hours exam. So 50-50%. So 50 for technical subjects and 50% for PEC. So same for the REE. 
you ma your rating must be 70% with no grade below 50% in any subject or any part. The report of ratings under section 20. The board shall report the ratings within 150 days, but for now, for, for almost five years, I think, it, um, uh, it took only three days in uh, through online. In section 21, which is the re-examination of the failed subjects, so if your grade is 50% below in any subject, you can, you can retake while an average grade of 70% shall be considered to have passed his licensure examination. Oath taking. So all successful candidates in the examination shall be required to take a professional oath. And the section 23 is the issuance of the certificates. So before you are before the PRC release your PRC ID, the PRC and the IIE will give you a certificate of registration for pre-employment services. Section 24, this is a very intriguing part of being an electrical engineer. This is a law man mandated by uh, Senator, ex Senator Trillianes, that we must have continuing professional education program or commonly named as CPD. So the CPD guidance shall be prescribed where this is every electrical engineer must complete 15 CPD units by joining seminars, uh, any related activities which give the government or any private individuals with CPD points. The section 25, which is the integration of the EE professions, so shall be integrated into the national organization. And this national organization is what we call IIEE, Institute of Integrated of Electrical Engineers. So this is IIEE. And the section 26 is the seal of professional electrical engineer. This part of the RA 7920 states that the section 26 the on, only the PEEs are allowed to seal a design. Okay? Take note, only PEEs are allowed to seal a design. As for section 27, is stated in your PRC ID soon. Okay? So section 28 is the refu refusal to issue certificates. I, uh, the board shall not issue a certificate to any person if you are convicted by the court of any criminal offense and the section 29 is there's a possibility of revocation of cor and possible possibility of suspension from the practice of profession if you are okay if you are if you are involving moral turpitude or you're already guilty for any immoral dishonorable conduct the qualifications on the possibility of revocation of your license and practicing of your profession okay then the rules and regulations of the PRC on administrative investigation shall govern the procedure and conduct of administrative investigation before the board of EE Reissuance. Okay, there's a possibility also of reissuance of revoked certificates, but take note of replacement of lost certificates. So, subject to the approval of the commission, so after the expiration of one year from the date of revocation. So, the other one is a new COR to replace which has been lost or destroyed 